Well, today I have a super extremely special guest because my tank is with, is with me today. And I will tell you why he's so special to me. Amazing. Um, yes. He ju you just told me that you're not a photographer and actually you don't like to be called as a photographer, even yes. though you have so much success yeah. in the photography industry. Right. Yes. And I can I can relate that too much with that because I, I know you since I was 12 years old and wow. I know your essence is way beyond an appearance. And I know it uh, and I always knew it. So I'm so glad we have this space. And thank you so much for your openness to just say, hey, my friend, yes, I'm here. And I'll just let's just talk and reconnect. It just, you know, like it really. And, you know, this is true. It really, really fits my heart. Um, because, you know, those people that they're, they're really part of your family as you grow up, is those kind of, those kind of uh, connections are unbreakable. You know, they're so pure. Yeah. And time passes and we, we apparently we change, but our soul or spirit or, or essence, it's, that's something it's actually, same. yeah, we actually, we actually fight with the world to go back to that. In a very pure way, right? We'll go all around. It's like, I just want to be the pure kid that I used to be, right? And, yeah. uh, and just see life all full of light. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor, baby. It means the world. Uh, it, it is super important to me. I, I feel like I, I slow down a little bit to, to go back and celebrate everyone in my life that had, has, uh, has, has um, touched me. And you're part of it. You're part of the, the first few people that I remember when I was young and my, 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 tribe, my tribe back in the day. I appreciate all the women that have been part of my life. I, I see them. I, I hold them dearly. You and Raquel, Ivero. Uh, you're part of a very important part of my life. You were bringing me peace at that time, you know, in a very dark place. All my life in Venezuela was so dark. And I really remember all the women that have been part of my life. Like, thank you for saving me. You kept me alive. So I really appreciate you. And this is an amazing connection to have right now. Thank you very much. Oh. Well, you know, we didn't do much. It was just really your, your charming spirit always you know mm. being there and even though when you mentioned and uh, you have been mentioned in social media in the last few things that i have seen is that you know you had that that part and uh, mm. and i felt guilty i didn't get to see tell you this um before we went on camera because i i was so involved in your life or i felt like it was a big part of your life you were a huge part of my life and i never saw that side you know i always mm. see you shining i always wow. see you you know like a ch so like a, a charming person that's why you were one of my persons not just my crush uh, but really you were truly my uh, friend right and those persons that I wanted to be around with you no matter what and all that I could see and I'm sure many people will be uh, we agree with this with me that all that you could radiate it was light really and uh, you connect so many people and it was all about having a good time and I'm mm. uh, always good habits right like going to the cinema going to that yeah. but anyways I don't want to get too into that because it's personal and everybody no knows. no but I love it you can talk about it I love my personal life I share it with everyone and I, I hate social media that makes you filter so much so I try to present it the the big the, the smallest mask I can wear if I can't I would be naked no mask but that's exactly it. And to what you're saying, I imagine right now, now that I can talk, uh, that I was just clinging onto you guys. You know, I was uh, when I was you. I was when I was with you guys. I knew I was happy. So I, I wanted. I didn't want to talk about my darkness or whatever, whatever I had in my life. So I imagine that's why I do hold you, uh, everyone in my life dearly. So I have to, uh, detached from a couple of people, but. Not people from your from your uh, your age. I don't know. I don't remember yeah, that what era, age like the, the, yeah. that time in like at that, that time exactly that yeah. specific time that season that we have. It was an amazing season. You know, you Alejandro, Raquel, Veronica. I I love them all. I, I love you guys. It's like it's love forever. We don't we we don't have to talk any 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 anymore. Yeah. And that's going to be a beautiful forever love. Yeah. 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 Same ways. 
But anyways, yeah. we're going to talk about your amazing projects that you were sharing with me earlier. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned it uh, uh, like a show and all those mm -hmm. kind of things. But I want to get deep in, get, let's dive in to your practices, your beautiful, um, you know, photography practices that you're doing in a very deep way that presenting in a beautiful package, very attractive package, but actually it's a very deep healing process that you're offering. And I could see you're, 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 you were just so excited about sharing it. And yeah. just like, I, of course, we want to know more about it. Amazing. Yeah, it's so we have so many different ways to explain what we do. But I guess I can, you know, put in put it into context, explaining a little bit how I got how I got here. Yes. Uh, I was always attracted to creation, just like you. You're a, you were a graphic designer. I was attracted to, you know, the visual arts and I wanted to create. And I love women. I love women like for, for mating. And I always needed a mother figure in my life. You know, I used to um, the mothers that I met from my friends, try to use them like my, I I wanted them. I remember Alejandro's mother. Yeah. She was like a mom to me. Yeah. And I had a couple like that that I was trying to, you know, to conquer, like, oh, treat me like I'm your son. I always needed that shit. Can I curse here or no? Is that okay? Try to try better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't so mind? Surrender into curse? the fucking soul, yeah. Okay, amazing. <laughs> yes, beautiful. And, well, I imagine now that I can explain it through conquering that, I, I imagine I fused those together and I started photographing my friends. And... I, that evolved as a career i was i love appreciating women i just you know that's who i am i love appreciating because i want i wanted to be seen by them by you girls i wanted to be seen uh with, with now that i think we all want that we all want appreciation we all want to be seen sometimes when when we go through amazing darkness we tend to uh you know become like a social and we don't want to see anyone because we've been so rejected to, with life that we push them away, but now that I'm, I'm extroverted now, I really appreciate connecting with people, and I want I I use my career to appreciate people. That's that's how I got here. Um, I started photographing girls and, and women, and through the career, I had different like artistic names. I had a production company called Octopus Studio, where I used to work more for money, and then at some point. I created with my wife Orangutan, which is solely a project where I, I get to appreciate women only that. And we were noticing that people were coming back because they were feeling amazing, not because of the photos. Actually, a lot of people were not liking the photos and they were telling me, I didn't like my photos, but you guys make me feel so good that I came back. And it was happening. It happens a lot, happens a lot. And then at some point, years after, um, someone people were starting vocalizing the mom their moment before the photo shoot and after the photo shoot the um, with people were no we were noticing that they were like feeling more confidence and through confidence i think uh, is a source of ambition if you're not confident uh it's gonna it's gonna be hard for you to believe that you can you know achieve other conquer other things other ambitions so confidence is what a lot of people are is lacking so through the photo shoot, we appreciate them. We give them so, such an amazing moment where everything is about them that people feel appreciated and confidence. The social media game is a super dark game and, and we participated in that because it's, it's like the new, I don't know if you, I can say it, but like the yellow pages in Venezuela, like the yeah. Pagina Amarilla. Yeah, the yellow page is like the new place where you have, to, you have to exist. It's the only way to have to exist. So you have to play a game um and i play a game where i get to shoot and post popular attractive uh physical women uh to give me a power the validation and the power to make other people that don't feel appreciated feel appreciated if i post a person that is not popularly attractive uh the account goes down and people don't like it and then right now it's a wave of yeah inclusion and it's cool but Social media doesn't reward you if you not if you don't post physically attractive people. Back in the day, I don't know if you remember, but I used to repeat, "All women are beautiful. All women are beautiful," and I imagine it was my way to try to conquer women. Right now, I 
I say everyone can be beautiful, but beauty has nothing to do with physical attraction. This is my only, this is a mission that I only carry. My, even my wife is, has, has a hard time repeating the, those phrases. Me and my wife, we have a very similar way we see life, but um, she, has, she has a way of saying the message and I have a different way. I'm more romantic and I don't like academia, so I like to be free. And I have this belief that the problem with society when it comes to, to confidence is physical attraction. It's the celebration of physical attraction. And the word beauty specifically, the, when we attach the word beauty to, to physical attraction, we hurt everyone. Everyone, because we, especially in Venezuela, where we come from, we have Miss Venezuela, which is a celebrated physical thing for the world. We are known as, we have the most beautiful girls. And now I know body types, brother. In Miss Venezuela, there's, there are three, three body types and there's like morphs in between. So there's ectomorph, mesomorph, endomorph. Ectomorph is the, is the body, is the, is the only body that is celebrated in the Miss Venezuela. Long torso. In Venezuela lanky. too. In the whole, well, everywhere, in, exactly. In most Latin countries, too, Latin yeah, background yeah. culture, in, like you in know. model agencies, too, Victoria's Secret, ectomorph. Yeah. So imagine a girl that in Venezuela is like, oh, you, it's a, it's a joke that we have in Venezuela. You will never be a miss. So they tell you you are not beautiful enough to compete in society, for for because you're not attractive enough enough, and. Yes, I use I use I use I use social media to get attention to controversial and to use this. I use popular attractive women. I some of them some of them are my friends. Some of them were just I say like business partner uh, because I don't like the message they're selling. But we, I create content for them, popularity, and and those people give me power. Every time I, it happened in the beginning of when I was creating orangutan. Um, like two years into the project, I got to meet this amazing Brazilian influencer. She was athletic, super hot. And then I went to Sao Paulo to shoot. And all the women that I shoot in Sao Paulo were fans of this girl that I shoot here in Miami. Mm. So I, I saw, I experienced all these women feeling so insecure because it's not like they were uh, getting inspired. They were insecure because they admired this girl so much because of the physical appearance. That it was just, it's an impossible way to get there. And then I started to be like them. Oh my God. It's so, and we all do this. We all compare each other. It's, it's our nature. We all compare each other to people we have in social media because they're, they're popular. You know, you want to be popular. You want to be seen. Um, but for women, women is, the, uh, we're all, we all need appreciation, but we're used to appreciating, vocalizing women. You can, women can say women are beautiful. Men can say women are beautiful. Men, we are left behind. Like we don't, we cannot say men are beautiful. If you, if you, if a man says it, it's not as accepted right now. It's a new thing, but it's not as accepted. So, so women is used to being seen to, yeah. to, yeah. And you have to like, take care of yourself. Like what is just because you have makeup or, or you, or you change your physical appearance. That's not taking care. That's just a uh, designing the cover for attraction you know you're designing the cover for attraction i i have this analogy that this is like the cover of our of our album but it's important the songs that are inside the substance that we have inside that's what's important that's what that's what actually can uh, categorize you as beautiful i believe someone is beautiful by their honesty has nothing to do with physical attraction how do i know this because i had is, you know, sexual experiences with very attractive women that for me are so ugly. Lie, they lie. And I hate that shit. I used to be, I used to lie for, because in Venezuela, they teach you to hustle and you have to use lie to manipulate and get your things. And now I believe in extreme honesty. I believe that you can get anything you want with extreme honesty. That's, that's a better route. Yeah. And I measure beauty by how honest you are. If you're super honest, you tell me how broken you are, how much you have fucked up in your life, how hard life is for you. I will fall in love with you, brother. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or man, I will fall in, you, fall in love with you as a person. And I will tell you, brother, you're beautiful. Has nothing to do uh, with physical attraction. So that's what my career taught me. 
And now I consciously use my career for this because I have this amazing power. Whenever I say I'm beautiful to a girl that I have, I should, uh, let's say, for example, I should have 50 year old women. And she was called ugly when she was in school. This has happened a lot. I have shot more than a thousand people. It's crazy. <laughs> and they still, they still carry, they still carry that bag of ugliness through their whole life. And they're determined by their cover because she doesn't accept her cover because she believes she's ugly. So her whole, her whole life is determined by someone calling her ugly in school. And now my, my job, I feel that my job is to reprogram that shit. Brother, you're beautiful. I love fat girls. I love uh, black girls, Asian girls. I, I love them all, brother. I don't think all, everyone is beautiful. I don't think if you're a liar, you're ugly to me, brother. And, and I've seen that. I've shot influencers, super famous influencers, and they say they're natural, for example. I have nothing against surgery. I have nothing. I have tattoos. I have gauges, uh, modifications. I have nothing about, uh, against modifications. But be honest, brother. If you are, this happens for real. I shot a, an influencer. She had her apps made. Her breasts, her booty, her face, no problem. I don't mind. Um, but she says her body's natural. And I have shot, I shot a girl in London, an Indian girl. This girl that is an influencer is a, a Colombian girl. This was like five years ago. And this Colombian girl says she's natural. I shot a girl in, in uh, an Indian girl, an Indian girl, brother. Nothing to do with Colombian body. And she was so insecure. She felt so terrible because she couldn't be like this Colombian girl. And she was working out. She, she, has, she did incredible working out and stuff. And we, me and Christina, we were, we were like, brother, you did amazing. But don't, don't let uh, your inability to look like other person makes you feel like you're not enough or you're amazing, brother. You did amazing. You're in shape. You're beautiful the way you are. You know, you conquer. So it gives me like goops because it's so dark. This life is so dark because they lie. I wish this influencer said, my, my apps are fake. My booty is fake. I love it. It hurt. I, I love it. It's Misuwe, but don't say it's real. Don't say it's natural. So it's, it's real because someone made it for you. But don't say it's natural because it's an impossible goal to reach for young girls, brother. So, you know, that's kind of like the battle that we're having all the time. And it, it is my career and I love it now. I used to hate it. Now I love it because it's completely the opposite. Yeah, you went yeah. inwards. When, yeah, when you exactly. are from inside out, you just see the magic and it's just like inner power. It never ends because you, yeah. you just keep, you, you found the source of it. That's kind of what it sounds to me, right? And that's kind yeah. of why I experienced life. When I found the source, then I, I don't have to worry about, about getting more of it because I know where the source is. <laughs> Like oh, I just, yeah, yeah. I just can't. I just can't relax, and and yeah. that's so beautiful what you're saying, especially coming from you, because I think I mentioned it. I shared it with you a couple of times already. That w one of the things that I don't really for a, for a long time I didn't really knew what you were up to because you were kind of like constantly mm -hmm. like adding me on your accounts and saying hi, and I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm so glad we could reconnect, but then I will <laughs> like see what you were doing, and something didn't click to me okay. you know and okay. I think I mentioned it to you it's like it was I know what you do and I know you're way more than this you know I, and and yeah. I know it wasn't more about the filters and all that but of course I was just seeing the cover right because yeah that's the attention media, yeah right? attention color media. and because I'm not into into adding more that that material in my life because as you yeah. mentioned it to you like you mentioned it before this reality is full of it right we don't yeah. have to go we don't have to look for it it just comes to us yeah. as a as a reminder for me it's a reminder is that is this the way you want to take because i grew up in venezuela in a very um you you use the right word what was it um very superficial yeah vain you know? very yeah we we yeah the way we look is very important is very important yeah. and that's something i was really never quick to it yeah. Um, and it was hard. It was a battle for me. It was a, a constant battle my whole life because I, 
I wanted to have my natural hair. I remember a couple of times you were telling me, why do you, you don't color your hair? And if you do this to your uh, head, I'm like, leave me alone. <laughs> I like it the way it is. <laughs> you know, terrible. but it, it's society. You know, society will like, what about if you do that? Or, you know, you lose some weight or you change your, yourself. But for a woman, like you mentioned, it, we are exposed to that since we're little, right? Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, especially in our Latin culture, that's what I'm, I talk, Super. you know, mostly because now, like um, I have spent 15 years now in Canada and experienced the other oh. side, right? Like women being the way they are, especially since they are a child, that was, is beautiful. Okay. I, I remember when nice. my son started daycare um, okay. five years ago, he was wearing two shoes in daycare and he was, you know, playing with all these things because I'm a belly dancer. So I always use that at home. So for him it was wow. familiar. So he wouldn't pick the cards, the cars and the trucks okay. and all those stuff. He will pick the fabrics and the tutus and all the dancing things and he will perform. Qué bonito. <laughs> you know? In daycare. Right. And and of course when I heard that, there was there was a conflict. Because my old programmation was there, right? My old programmation yeah. is like kids should play with toys and cars, etc., dinosaurs. And I was like, maybe there's something wrong with him. You know, there was a part of me yeah. and there was another part of me feeling proud that he just copied what he sees at home. But now I want to I wanna keep going with this beautiful work that you do. And I, and I know it's very efficient. I do intuitive life coaching sessions and it comes... When I connect and I get the information, I quite often get the programmation, um, the programmation information that the, the person is ready to upgrade their software, <laughs> to put a name yeah. on it, right? So they are programming. Ready. I, I would say yeah. it's called programming. Yeah. Yeah, the program. Yeah, the programming that they are experiencing. Uh -huh. They're ready uh -huh. to upgrade or liberate all old uh, behaviors that they are doing. We could see uh -huh. it as a behaviors, but I see it as a programming too that they're yeah. ready to liberate those programs so we can access for what is next you know for them yeah and of course you have the science how do you call um, pseudoscience pseudoscience but no, yes. when i repeat it it's pseudoscience but uh the information i'm getting is science from real scientists uh facts and studies and yeah i'm finally reading books and and listening to amazing people there's amazing intellect people intellectual people that I follow thanks to the popularity on social media. Um, they're able to reply to me and, and decide. There is amazed, an amazing scientist called Andrew Huberman. And this guy is huge and he's amazing. And I've been asking him stuff about my how I feel and stuff. And, and he replies and, you know, it becomes, I, I become like this with a lot of people. I try to, you know, I thank them because of their information. And they're able to reply like, oh, amazing that you're following this diet or these new uh, patterns of behavior or whatever, whatever I'm, I can learn and, and put into practice. So, yeah, I love it. It's like I see them like new father figures. Yes. Okay. So how do you experience this into your practices, into what you do with photography? How do I incorpor incorporate yeah, this into my you... practice? Yes. Well, I, I study a lot because I, I see a lot of people... A lot of people come here because they feel insecure or they want to feel appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, now that we vocalize what we do on social media, a lot of people, they don't come here for the photos. They come here for the experience. And we say this it's always an experience. I, when I was before Orangutan, I was shooting famous people and I was working with record labels. And I, I, I remember people were congratulating, con yeah, congratulating me i don't i don't know if that's yeah, how you say it yeah so. they were saying to me like damn mike you work with these these people these people and i remember hating the experience these people were so all about them they don't care about the creators especially when you don't have a name when you don't have a, a name there is no validation so you're working only for them it's not a collaboration so there's no respect from the artist to the creator It's a creator, it's not an artist. So at that point, it's a, it's a creator. And I rem and then I was able to, you know, vocalize it and saying, damn, these people are focusing so much in the final product that they don't care if they enjoy the experience. 
So you, you go and you win an Oscar and you hate working with the director. That makes no sense. Happens to my wife too. My wife, she used to work for Nickelodeon and she loved the people. She loved the people that introduced her into working in Nickelodeon, but she used to hate working in Nickelodeon. She used to work in, hate it so, so bad that she used to think, how hard, how hard do I have to crash my car so I don't have to go to work? That's how much. And then you see, and then we were, we were broke at that time, I remember. And we were seeing television and you see her name, like she was a hair of wardrobe, design words or something like that. And she's, she's super thankful for the experience. She loved, uh, she loved the girl that put her there. She loved her, but she hates the work. You know, that's the truth. So she was seeing her name and she was not proud of it. And I, rem I remember feeling the same for my work. And I was able to vocalize it. Mia, we're working in this production world. We're hating the experience. We're getting the rewards, the name recognition. For what? If we hate it. Yeah. So I, I do the completely the opposite. I tell people, forget about the photos, people. Uh, come here, have a great time. And there's, it's like Disney. There's going to be some photos at the end. Just a reminder of an amazing, an amazing experience. And in the experience, yeah, what happen is, happens in the experience, uh, we have this amazing house that we, that we, get, we got. And, and when we travel, we, we, we rent an amazing house so we can do the experience. So the, the place is part of the experience. So what we do is basically we give them an experience when you accept everyone, everyone's reality. A window opens. This is a, rom a romantic idea. A window opens of there's an ability to have a beautiful discussion to, to influence new ideas. Mm -hmm. And that's why me and Christina, we need to study a lot because we, we never, we want to be like a real thera uh, um, therapist. Therapist? Real, yeah, therapist, exactly. We want to be able to tell them answers through their life. We're not going to tell them and anyone what to do. We're just telling them, this is why you're suffering from this. This is your surroundings is making you uh, do this. This is nutrition. This is supplementation. This is substances. Understand what, uh, what they all do and get informed. And then you can make decisions informed. It's not about you're doing something wrong or right. It's about information. The more information we have, the more we can make informed decisions. And, you know, there's not going to be so many young girls doing porn for money. You can do it because you love sex, brother. You love mm -hmm. sex. No problem. We know the girl. And we tell them the story. Mia, did we have this girl. She does it. We have a friend that the adult industry, brother, has, has opened our mind like crazy because it's nothing what we believe it is. Mm -hmm. um, we have a friend. Uh, there's a famous uh, uh, adult ad actress, porn star. And she started doing porn after she was married, conquer money. She has a husband. She has a boyfriend. They all know. And she started doing it because she loves sex. Yeah. And a lot of people do it because she loves sex. A lot of people do it because of money. And when you're young and you do something for money, don't do anything for money. It's going to bite you. It's going to yeah. hurt. So understand what you're getting into and get informed. And that's why we think we should legalize more crazy ideas so we can get more informed, study and protect people. This is what we believe. Um, so we need, we just study a lot because we want to help people. That's, I meant, well, I don't like to say that I like to help people. I'm giving myself answers. I love knowledge. I love experimentation. And if I, if I have experimentation, I have consciousness, I'm able to, you know, this is information I learned through this. What do you think about this? And, you know, I, I try everything every time, every week, a new diet. I try it. So I've been vegan. I've been carnivore. I've been all of, all of it. I just need to experience, experience everything. So I'm not one of those gurus that I teaching things that haven't, haven't experienced. I used to be obese 10 minutes ago, brother. Five years ago, I was, I was obese. Really? So, obese. Obese. Huge. Huge. I was 100 pounds bigger. So it's crazy. Wow, I'll show you wow. a photo. I miss that. I, I never, I have never seen you obese, but Come I mean, you, like, you'll, oh, you'll, hate, you'll be like, oh my God, what happened to you, Mira? Oh my God. Yeah. I did. I like, I had no connection with you by that time. See, mm. I was obese five years ago 
Then I was vegan and I suffered too. This was when I was vegan. Mm-hmm. So I did the completely the opposite, and now I now and now finally I understand nutrition. Yeah, we all we all have different codes. You have to understand what your code is. You have to see. You have to create your own diet. You have to understand who you are, where you come from, what you have eaten, what your diet has been all your life. Nutrition is so important to it's conquer important. your ambition. Glad, of course, you. It's like you have to keep yourself like crumbs to feel something we me and christina we even have we always say it so it's because it's a controversial idea we eat to have sex if you want to have you want to have amazing sex eat eat proper so you can have amazing sex we in society we don't know we, we don't know about nutrition so we just celebrate food so much that we don't care if the activity after nutrition suffers so i used to you know eat something and then suffer makes no sense yeah. You need to eat to conquer the next activity, whatever yeah. it is. So you feel realized, accomplished. Yeah. So we just, we're, we're learning about everything so we can actually, you know, uh, be conscious and be able to give people information when we give the experience. Yeah, that's beautiful because by by the time, well, you do the embodiment of that. I, and, I, and I hear you with the, the nutrition. Yeah. It's, it's taking me a while too. It's taking me a while to figure it out. And I have been going through all the path too. Okay. And uh, at this moment, I'm more do the embodiment at the moment, trying to meditate what I really want and hear, because I do okay. feel like, like my soul knows what I want, but it's my ego that gets into the middle that is like, uh-huh. no, I want to be very productive. So I need to eat. And I, I don't want to be thinking about food for the next four hours. So let's eat when I'm sometimes I'm not even hungry. Right. And I have yeah. the label of binging overeating, all those kind of yeah. things that I realized it was actually hormonal. You know, it, was, yeah. it wasn't it was like I was binging. It was that actually my hormones were unbalanced and it wasn't uh, getting the nutrients that I was needing. So, of yeah. course, eventually I had to, you know, take 300, 3,000 calories in one sit because I was yeah. depleted. So yeah. it's, it's interesting how you put it that way, especially with women. <laughs> Yeah. They come for a photo shoot and then they, they, you know, they grab all this information. They learn about everything. My, my, my wife now is also a coach now. And uh, it's amazing because she is academic and she's studying these new things. She's just studied hormones and we both study it. Uh, so she has this coaching monthly call evolving with Christina Pilo. And it's every, like she puts it in three days, she sells them out a hundred people. So it, she's under her four, four, 400 uh group now it's crazy because we have learned so much i'm i'm very obsessive so whenever i get into something i'm like Ugh. and uh i was yeah, able to uh, code, code that into christina too like she now she's amazing she's studying so much she's amazing she's killing it and we know about everything now i mean everything that makes us feel amazing mm-hmm. and we tell them people question everything that men made everything that men made question it Experience it yourself, and then you can you can make a more a better informed decision. Especially with what nutrition, what men call nutrition, like for example, sugar, refined sugar should not be nutrition. Yeah. It is one hundred percent a substance. Especially what it does to your brain. You get a you give a kid a, a, can, a candy. Don't complain about how hyper hyperactive is going to be, and then the, he, he's going to crash down. Don't complain, bro. It's one hundred percent a substance. Yeah. It's, it's it, crazy. It, coffee is it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's so crazy. Bad. It's not a well. I don't know if it's bad, but you should understand what it does. Because yeah. if let's say you need to save, you need to save your kid's life. Okay, take some sugar and save his life. But eat, get, get, consume with a purpose. Everything consume with a purpose. You need th- You have things to do. You have. You had a life to conquer, brother. You have ambitions. Eat, consume, even ideas, consume them with a purpose. When, you, when you're getting entertained, get entertained because you need to free flow. Mm-hmm. And then when you need to learn, you know, consume something that is going to make your brain elastic to learn. After 26 years, after we turn 26 years old, we, uh, we have a, hard t- a harder time learning, coding things into our co- subconscious, mm-hmm. subconsciousness, you know, to our involuntary brain, part, part of the brain. So we need to be conscious of everything. So we so we're able to, you know, control this vehicle as much as we can, as much as we can, because we live unconsciously. 
We, yeah. we literally live unconsciously. So we, we got to do our best to, if we're going to, if we want to get to where we want to get, brother, we need to consume, get nutrients to conquer reality, brother. You need to, you feed yourself for something later, to feel something later. It's not like you feel hungry and then you're going to binge or whatever, especially with nutrition. These days, it's so hard to get nutrients from food. Food and nutrition yeah. is two different things. Yeah. yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. Even yeah. the vegetables, all the things that are not organic and all the extra food, the, the thing. Yeah. And I'm telling you because like sugar is so bad and I see it with my son. Like I okay. like I have this rejection with sugar because I still I haven't been able to clean myself from sugar. I do it okay. once okay. in a while. Okay. I, I put my pants on. I'm like, fuck it. I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I see the changes over two weeks, but then society again, you know, like if you want to yeah, influence you, like, whatever, oh, let's all like, eat. I like a little mm. cake, a little piece of that. And then everything is sugar. Right. And then yeah. once you, you do the consumption again, it's really hard to break it. And I see it with my son. He just had a little, like, I don't want to be the, the witch that like, you know, like a Willy Wonka <laughs> mother that yeah. doesn't allow him to eat anything. But but seriously, he just eats a little bit of it. And I can see not not even after one minute, he's already hyper. Jacked. He's uh, like jacked. One minute. Yeah, one, one minute. He's jacked. And it's a little yeah. bit. So I can see it. I, I see it, the reflection. It's like, no wonder all my life eating a, like badly, like for yeah. 30 years. And actually, um, no wonder why my, my body's suffering so much. And it's taking me so long to adjust. So I'm accepting it. You know, yeah. it's like, I accept that and I, and I go with the journey, what it takes me and I explore mm. and I'm like, you know, resilient with the situation because I know I'm changing something that has been a pattern for 30 years plus, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to change it in three months. It's, it's taking me years now, but that's okay. But going back to what you're saying, like eating for sex or whatever, something funny happened to me and I want to share it here because when I was 34, or something i was doing the the business like a business management program okay and it was so hard for me so out of my comfort zone and that's what i did it because i was always a designer and i always kind of like as able to succeed easily right like i was always able to stay up one night and then still get a good mark on whatever i was doing it's my ability but i knew reading a book and reading statistics wasn't (laughs) right (laughs) so so i wanted to step a little bit out of my comfort zone in my self-discovery path and i decided to go to business and it took me six months to understand the food thing because one day it's like i'm feeling so tired for exams and then one day i felt so energized and then i realized what did i eat oh i had salmon and some potatoes and some veggies right i was like huh okay i repeat it the next day for another exam, same thing. I did amazing. Another day, I didn't eat the salmon. I maybe I ate, I don't know, something else, that, that's chicken. Amazing. I don't know, and it didn't work. So okay. I was like putting kind of like I was te- texting <laughs> all my friends like, "You want to pass the exam? Eat salmon." <laughs> <laughs> you know, because once you find your formula, you feel so empowered, right? Like you know, uh-huh. true, and then true. Hormonally, it's it's in, so important. Nutrition. It's so funny we're talking about this in. The- <laughs> in this episode because i i didn't see it coming but oh, it's, it's all it's all i know huge. it's all i know now uh yeah i know whenever in the house we it's me and my wife and my assistant julie she comes here so it's, we have two i have two women's and me and we have this exercise and whenever we're feeling hormonally down we vocalize it so we know the rhythm that we have to drive our conversations or the themes that we cannot touch and when I, and I, I'm special with that because I'm very, you know, I'm uncomfortably honest. So I tell them, Gir- girls, my body feels depressed today. So let's, if I treat you wrong or something, let me know because I have this energy. And we all have this consciousness now in the house. And it is part of our practice. We, we teach that to people and, you know, like understand that how your body feels is going to um, influence the conversations and the result of your of everything you're going to interact in when you're awake this day so be conscious of how you feel your body your body is what tell what's telling your mind what to do what to think and you know yeah literally it's your body and your body has this your body is going to tell you hey you want you're addicted to gluten you're addicted to this 
get it emotionally and you're going to get it because your friends are going to be your surroundings. Yeah. That's something, that's a practice we say. If you want to evolve ideas and, and practices, sadly, you have to change surroundings because your surroundings are going to influence you to celebrate food. And yeah. at, well, you can be like us. We bring our, we say like glutensilios. We bring our things to parties and stuff. Like I'm here to have a good time with you guys. I don't need to eat to feel bad, terrible. So let me eat what I eat and, and we can laugh. Let me smoke a joint but don't make me eat something. I'd rather smoke a joint than eat uh, corn. It's ter- mm-hmm. Corn is terrible for me, brother. So I'm rather him smi- I'm smiling with you. Why do I have to? I'm, I don't celebrate food like that anymore. We celebrate going, I say it, we celebrate going to the gas station to put gas. And then we park the car to feel terrible. I was cheating myself. I was feeling gastritis. Isn't the idea to fill the car and go do things? You know, play with your kids. Uh, go up a mountain um, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't able to kneel to take photograph it was crazy I wasn't able to kneel to take photograph now I'm athletic again so I'm able to do whatever I want brother yeah ah good for you it's good amazing for you. I celebrate that I celebrate that I know oh, like uh, it's part of the self-discovery you know it's part of the um, self-discovery yeah. understanding your body and do embodiment if you don't know what's going on then yeah. you don't know other things happening to you because you don't, yeah. you don't understand, especially women. You mentioned it. We, we talk about this before, but we women were so cyclical. See, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah you have to. It's part of, it's part of your work. It's yes, part. Part of and, and we are in this society that we fight it. We fight mm-hmm. it, right? And yeah. it's just, for me, it's all about surrender to it and really embrace yeah. it and, and take all the advantage. There's so much more advantage yeah. into surrender to my nature than actually fight it over. That's yeah. the way I experience life right now. Amazing. Bro. And uh, and yeah, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. So about, can you show us this tattoo for the ones who are seeing in YouTube? The other this one? one? Yes, tell this me one more is, about that. <laughs> this one this says, one. this one yeah. says, well, uh, I was, you know, when I was young, I was very aggressive and more euphoric. I'm still very euphoric. I don't remember well, that I, part of you. You're, you're well, yeah, aggressive. of course. But well, one day I, when you, I was, wanted to, you wanted to get in trouble with one person I remember in school. No, yeah, I was very aggressive. But women calm me. So, of course, it's hard for you to remember that. Women calm me. And, and, and this is a family I was picking. Uh, but outside, when I was alone, I was very aggressive, yeah. And, and, and also aggressive in my posture in life, my intention. I was so ambitious that I'm like, I'm going forward. Don't get in the way. And uh, I had this posture that, you know, I'm stubborn. I know it all. I know now I, I'm experimenting. I know it all. At some point, I, I, you know, I got a comp, I accomplished my life. I got married. Uh, me and my wife, we, we had a miscarriage. And, but the moment she told me she was pregnant, I believe that was the moment that I felt like, damn, brother, I made it. And right now we don't want to have kids anymore. We're, we're up, we're up, we're up, we don't want to have kids, but I understand that we have that coded into us. We all want to be parents. And my, my goal in life was not to be a creator was to have a family. Mm-hmm. And when I realized that I said like, damn, I won. I want to have a tattoo. Also, I came here to win. I'm all tied with my beliefs. And I feel accomplished. And when you feel accomplished, you don't have the need to, to intervene in anyone's life. You're, you're like, oh, finally, brother, no more anger, anger. I don't, I'm not angry with my mom anymore. I'm not angry with anyone, brother. Everyone is amazing. I made it. I'm living on borrowed time, which is this tattoo. And this one says ignorant computating. It says that we're all ignorant until the day we die. And having a posture that you're ignorant will will you'll go into a conversation willing to learn. You know, this is my posture. Share it with me. I'm gonna share your mind. And let's see who learns more. And let's try to learn a lot. Let's try to learn. I love knowledge now more than anything. More than, more than anything, knowledge is what a more than sex, brother. And I love sex. So more than sex, knowledge is what I love the most. Yeah. So, it's so why just, did you decide to to actually tat, do the tattoo in your brain? I I I have. Do you not forget I, about it. 
Well, no, I tat I tat in my head um, because I want to be rebel until the day I die. And I'm functional. I pay my taxes. I bought a house. I got married. What else do you, society, what else do you need from me? I'm, I'm telling you, because I get stopped in the, I, I love attention. You know, we all love attention, but I'm consciously saying it. I love attention. I love getting stopped at, at the airport and they're not going to find anything. I'm, I'm lo I love who I am. And actually this red one says big FS and means big fuck to society. I tat my face because I want to tell society, I want them to judge me. And then why not have your attention? Hear me out. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove you, you were wrong with your prejudice. That's all. Prejudice is an amazing tool to keep us ready for life. As long as we don't make the judgment. Don't make a judgment. Have the prejudice. Think I'm crazy. I am crazy. But think I'm yeah, crazy. <laughs> and yeah, but hear me yeah. out. We all are, brother. But hear me out and let me sell you my message because I know you're wrong about me. So that's why I had my, my head tattoo. My, my dad hates it. But, um, but dude, this is who I am, brother. This is who I am. I, I'm so proud of who I am. Me first and everyone else second. Me first. If I'm good, I, this is, I have this belief and I share this with people. If I'm good, I'm going to give the best version of me to everyone. Mm -hmm. And we have like a tribe. We literally have a tribe and we're trying to, people think we're like satanic or some shit. And really? <laughs> we play with it. Yeah, and we play with it. Of course, we love attention. We don't believe in anything. We believe in us and everything that we can prove. And in, the, in our tribe, we have like beliefs. One of the beliefs is this one. When you get into an, aer an airplane, the, they tell you, they always do this example. If the, plans is gonna, the plane is going to crash, the mom needs to put, her, put the mask first and then put it to the kids. And we always say that to everyone. If you put the mask to your kids first, you're going to die, brother. Who's going to take care of those kids? So a lot of moms, a lot, a lot of parents, or a lot of father figures, they don't take care of themselves. They want to tell the kids what to do. But sadly, as people and men, we don't learn by words and ideas. We learn by example. You need to conquer who you are, your reality, because your kid is going to see your movie. And that's how it's going to be influenced by your example. No. Put the mask first, take care of yourself, and, and, and be amazing. And give them the best version of yourself. And that's with everything. There's people that I don't, I have nothing against religion. I was religious when I was young. I used to, you know, romantically feel God. But now. When I, was that? I'm, I'm, I miss that huh? part. When was well, that? Well, no, I was, I was influenced. My dad took me to church. And when, I wasn't when, the most. How old were you what, by that? Huh? How old? I, yeah, I remember any of that. I stopped praying eight months ago, brother. <laughs> yeah. Because I even know. though. You said that to me. I was like, no, what? but I was, I was not a, I was not a, a fanatic intense, but I, I used know. to believe in religion and used to pray every night and I still pray. Now I pray. Thank you universe for the resources and the opportunity to compete. And I, and I believe that we cannot, uh, we cannot unlearn. We cannot control what we feel. We can only reprogram. So let's say we were, we were raised before 26, before our brain, when our brain was super elastic and we were coding, uh, our parents were coding ideas into us. We're going to have those ideas until the day we die. So let's say I was coded jealousy, for example. I'm still going to feel jealousy, but now I have a mental cue. When I feel jealousy, mental cue, the feeling that I feel uh, gets tricked inside and it gets developed and I can control the way I behave. And no problem. So I don't put I don't put weight into ideas. Whenever there's problems, I don't put weight into them because I know it's my body is gonna is gonna depending on how my body feels, I'm gonna deal with the problems. It has nothing to do with the problem. Life is full of problems, and all you have to do is solve problems. So you better be you better be okay with solving problems. It's it's, it's about solving problems to the day we die. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah, yeah, if so. you see it as a problem, I, I started long, I, I yeah, started circumstances. maybe like a, yeah, maybe like a year ago or a year or two years ago, I started seeing everything as an opportunity because exactly. I, I mentioned it to you, the story that I, that I was sharing with you. Like I, I look back and I see everything is perfect. And then maybe I'll share it here. Um, uh -huh. When we were a teenager, 
you were expelled from school, right? Yeah. One of, one of my schools. I went to five schools. Well, the, the one we were together, right? Uh -huh. And I was crying and I felt mm. like your life was going to end and you were going to get mm. so much trouble. And I, I remember for weeks I was trying to, you know, move my, my like if I were so powerful, but I was talking to <laughs> okay. everyone, you know, and, and, and I talked to you. It's like, they're going to spell for, they're gonna spell you and you're starting to study more. And, and I was so sad because I truly thought that they were shutting you down. You know, yeah. your, your future. And it happened, it just the opposite happened. You know, like actually yeah. you got into the right place with the right people that they actually connect you with the right movements in the future. And there you are. You were meant to, I, I have no doubt, you were meant to experience those realities that you are doing, like you are experiencing right now. Yeah, yeah. You were you were already doing it in a in a ma minor scale, hmm. as you may feel, but uh but that's that's how you were projecting by then yeah you know? like maybe with your dark shadow that you didn't want to see but yeah. what you were always showing is exactly everything that you were saying and you were just a denier right ah. you were the rebel you were always trying to, your yeah. new ideas and always expressing yourself even though you have mentioned it that you were um very introverted but with yeah. your family like, like you're saying but close friends you were always being able to express yourself with yeah. the way you were you know dressing, yeah dressing and stuff i used to yeah and the, and the and the same rituals you already had rituals yeah. i remember we went to the cinema every weekend <laughs> and go to my mom. <laughs> yeah and we had we, we always had to rent movies on the weekend and go so, to someone else's house wow. and do rituals Qué and pero. i could see it right like I, I for me i'm a free soul so i was always like yeah i'll go and join you guys but then i'll do my own thing because i like yeah. to explore life differently every day I'm not into rituals, so when I see it, it's just like it caught my attention. So basically, it, it's the same you. It's the same. I can see just the wow. same you in a in a in a now in, in an adult. And an evolu an evolution. Yeah, we're That's constantly amazing. in evolution. Oh well, yeah, like, yeah, I, I, we're constantly in evolution, but the essence is so say it's the same, <laughs> same shit. Talent. It's amazing you say that because yeah, yeah, I always wonder like, damn, I've been moving so fast. And, and I, I don't, you know, I don't like to look back. I only look back to, you know, look what I have to learn and move forward. Um, and, and if you don't get stimulated by memories, you just don't remember things or people that you're just moving forward constantly. Yeah. And I love it. I love moving forward. And, and then going back like, damn, right now I'm connecting with you. I love it. Uh, going back to what you were saying in school, um, when they kick me out, rejection is is something that i always have inside of me it's rejection is something that uh thankfully i was not able to drown and, and the, i did have the posture that you're saying that like you know everything happened amazing because i was moving forward thankfully i was ambitious and moving forward um but a lot of people are some some people drown and and they drown because they don't feel accepted and part of my message because i still feel rejected sometimes sometimes uh, you know People are, the level of superficiality is so high that sometimes me and Christina, we are in a dinner, for example, and there's always this person that is always complimenting Christina by her physical appearance, for example. And there's a point where both of us, we're so intellectual with each other, where we're like, damn, brother, can you say something different? Can you say something about our ideas? Or a lot of, a lot of women, happens to me, like uh, grown-up women that are very superficial, they 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 make me feel rejected because they think Christina is um, the, the, she likes, for example, you know, I'm so visual that I help Christina create the house. I mean, I have this vision of making the house amazing and I get offended when the, when women come here, like Christina, you did such an amazing job. And I'm like, brother, <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? You have no idea what you're saying. And they make me feel rejected. But now, you know, I'm like euphoric. And I'm like, are you sure this is just Christina? Because it feels like we, we do it together. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, I, mean, uh, I hate rejection. And I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm amazing at it. And because uh, like my bigger, the, the biggest person that cheer for me is myself. And, you know, I, I am egocentric. I, I, I do love myself a lot. And I try to tell that to people. Put yourself first, brother. Put yourself first because 
No one's going to make you happy. You have to make yourself happy. You have to make your reality happen. It's all about you. Find someone that is going to help you. you know, when you're down, lift you up. And then you have, you have to help them too. But I don't think you find love. I think you make love. You have to build love and you make it with a partner. But happiness, brother, you're never going to find happiness. You live happiness, being sad and being, being celebratory at some points. But happiness is something that you live. It's not a place that you get. So, you know, I'm happy when the, the moment I got accomplished with my wife and, and, and I created this family thing, I got, I'm accomplished. So whatever happens here is just extra. That's how I see life now. Well, thank you for that message. And I can add to that mask thing from the airplane because I, as a parent, I forget constantly. Like, I'm in, and I'm into this journey of intuitive and coaching and self-discovery, inner work. And constantly I find myself, you know, trying to control the situation, you know, trying to, to control the external instead of the internal. And that's a calling. That's a reflection for me. That's a mirror when I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's especially with my son. It's like, he should do that. And that's the moment when I'm like, no, it's because I have to do it. That's I, like, I have to learn how to do that. I have to forgive that. I have to forget that or et cetera. Yeah. But going back, you mentioned something. And before we go, because I know you have to go and. Um, no, we're good. We're good. Uh -huh. Thank you so much for this, my friend. I really, really I love it. I love it. it. Me, I'm I really having a great time. It. But, you know, it was a beautiful message that you said is, you know, I'm pretty sure many people were align with that and resonate. I don't know about this. I don't know about now because I, I haven't seen you in forever, but uh -huh. I do know, I do know that you were very, very loved when you um. were a teenager, you know, and, and I, I, I know where you were sharing about the rejection and you felt rejected. Oh, I mean, by you guys. By, by your environment, by the environment. Okay. Yeah. You know, by you like, guys, by you guys. It, no, by everyone. Like uh, you were someone that people easily get to love. Okay. Okay. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah uh, exactly. it's something yeah, that I experienced. Okay. And, and of course I love you because you were my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Close friend. But uh, it's something I could see, right? It's just some, um, you know, like I like to observe people's behavior as well. And, and that's yeah. something I always saw in you. And same thing, everywhere where you go, you will find your tribe right away because people will yeah. like, will be attracted to that vibe. So it's funny how you say that you were always um, rejected, rejected by my rejection by the was system. A trigger. Yeah. yeah, by the system, <laughs> by the system, by the system, and my my family, and 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 my family didn't make me feel rejected. I felt rejected because my home, which is I didn't yeah, share, yeah. I imagine with you guys much. Very few little people know knew, but you know, I had a broken home in my house, yeah. and that's where everything starts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Exactly. It was just my house. It's yeah, a yeah, but it's beautiful that you say that. It's beautiful that you say that because I felt that way by my friends and by my surroundings and by, by, by the people that I was picking to be my family. And, you know, I just was influenced. Yeah, definitely. But I, I still feel rejected by my dad and we still have these conversations all the time. And, and I love them. He's my hero. But he's, he, he does an amazing job of making me feel rejected. As a mirror, um, he serves you as a mirror. Oh probably. my God! Yeah, and I think parents' job is part of that. It's just denying your ideas and denying whatever you want to do. I, I am frustrated with one specific idea. I wanted to be a musician, and my dad was like, "Damn, brother, you're not gonna be a musician. That's terrible. That's that's for gay." He told me, and I, and that idea specifically, I hold it like, oh, I mean, he's so proud of me. He's just. You know, not ever to understand it, but he's so proud of me. Like he tells everyone, everyone in the streets, like, do you know who Orangutan is? And then like, he's so proud. Now, now he says it. And, and we have an amazing relationship now because um, part of my trauma, my, one of my big traumas is, you know, the absence, absence of my mom. So she reappeared in my life only to show me a do other darkness. So I, put her away again and i'm like damn my dad became my hero that moment because i understand now why uh, he tried to keep her away and stuff now i understand it so at the moment my my mom appeared in my life which was three years ago yeah. um yeah after seeing her i haven't seen her i didn't see her since i was five years old so yeah. i didn't know who she was and then i met her and i saw something that i didn't like and my dad at that point became my my heroes like damn brother 
Okay. My dad did the best he could. No yeah. problem. So I feel okay. amazing now. And yeah, I love it. So I don't blame anyone for, for giving the reality to their kids. I just do my, I do my best to do it. Get informed because your kid is getting influenced by your reality. Not so much your ideas. It's, your, it's how you live life. Your example. Yeah. Yeah, the example is everything. They copy everything, everything. Yes. And yeah. we copy everything still from our parents, right? Like it's the uh -huh. programming, it's just there. And if you are doing it consciously, yeah. genetically, and if you don't yeah. act, if you don't put the attention into that, and you're like, okay, why am I copying it? If I, it's something I really want, is it actually adding or is actually making me miserable? And you're just repeating a pattern, right? You're the product of a pattern. Yeah. at that moment and it sucks but <laughs> yeah it does it does yeah all right my friend well thank you i don't keep you for long Vivo. No, all love. I love Vivo this. La thank, you. Mm. <laughs> thank you so wow, much thank you so much for this time and and your heart openness and etc 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 i really really meant to me it meant a lot to me and yes for sure we can expand more in the next projects you are having or the way you're experiencing life it's very empowering Uh, I can still feel the sense that you are constantly surrendering to what universe is sending you on your way. Yeah. And uh, that's a lifestyle. That's a Thank lifestyle. You. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me, brother. It means a lot. And, and, and I, love, I love this connection with you. And, and yeah, it was an incredible thing to do. Hopefully we can do it every so often. Of course. Yeah. This is yes. a space for those surrenderers that you know, we are, even though when we're surrendering, we are actually, like you're saying, We're constantly yeah. battling with patterns and society and programmation, you know, like yeah. just opening self-liberation, self-liberation to what actually get into the, the truth of what we actually are. Amazing. So, Beautiful. Love you, Happy baby. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hi, thank you, baby. Amazing. Wish you were here. Hey, where do you live? Where do you Vancouver. live? Vancouver. Vancouver. Okay. Oh, we're going to Toronto soon. So When? Uh, I think in like two or three months. Oh, summertime. It's going to be really hot in there. Yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. <laughs> let me know. It's a fly away, but maybe you yeah. guys want to come visit Vancouver. You will love it, and I will take you to magical places. Amazing. And when I'm saying magical, they <laughs> are magical. Amazing. Thank you, baby. It uh, mean the means the world, this thing. Thank you, baby. Mwah. All love. Take Same. care, baby.